stay tuned because for the next 60 minutes, Motorsports Unlimited is on the air. Hi, I'm Jerry Bryant, and these are the lovely ladies of Motorsports. And all this hour, we're going to have 60 minutes of action-packed excitement. All kinds of exciting things will happen. And we got the famous Bill Wilt, and we got all kinds of other good stuff that's happening all this hour. Motorsports Unlimited, 60 minutes of nonstop action. So let's go to the studio right now, huh? Welcome folks, I'm Patty Borowitz and I'm here to tell you a bit about what is going on. Motorsports Unlimited is an American cable access television show that has been around since 1986. In that time we have filmed well over 1,300 episodes. These test episodes are snippets of shows from our vault. We sure hope that you enjoy them. In today's day and age of computers, YouTube and the internet, we are taking advantage of it and bringing Motorsports Unlimited global. Subscribe to our YouTube channel under Bill Wilt, because over the next few weeks we are going to have our full 60-minute episodes broadcasting. Be sure to tell all of your friends and join us on YouTube under Bill Wilt. Let's get started. Now I would like to give you a wonderful voiceover describing all of the vehicles in this parade. But quite frankly, as you know, I don't know a great deal about tractors other than what I learned at this show. And let me remind you that this was at the Lake County Farm Heritage Association Fall Festival. And this happens in September every year uh, in Lake County. Uh, really well worth attending. We uh, thoroughly enjoyed it and there was really something for everyone. I know that most people are going to think this would be just for farmers, but it's absolutely not true. Uh, anyone can find something of interest at this show. And by the way, there comes Chuck Chaplewski, uh, the owner of the bulldozer that I got to drive. Thank you once again, Chuck. It was absolutely terrific. I've wanted to drive a bulldozer all my life and uh, Chuck gave me the, uh, the opportunity to do it. Uh, and it was just wonderful. You talk about feeling like the boss. Boy, do you feel like the boss. Now notice also that there's tractors of all sizes, shapes, and descriptions all the way down to farm tractors. What we have here is a Ford, I call it a Ford Ferguson. I guess it's just a Ford tractor. I always call them Ford Fergusons because that's what I remember from my youth. But apparently the Ferguson part of it is the design of the three-point hitch. Still in all, Ford Ferguson is appropriate for that. And you knew it was a Ford Ferguson, or a Ford I should say, uh, because it was gray. And we learned that on the tractor show that the gray ones are the Ford tractors, the red ones are the farm malls, and the green ones are the John Deere's. Now having said that, let me also say this. There are some very variations on that because uh, there's an Oliver, a uh, much smaller manufacturer, that also has green for a color, although they have a splash, a fairly large splash of yellow on it too, but it's kind of a predominantly green vehicle. And there are some smaller tractor manufacturers where the lines of distinction start to get blurred. But as far as the big manufacturers are concerned, and I hope I'm saying this right, and if I'm not, uh, we'll correct it again in a later program, the big manufacturers, the green ones are the John Deere's, the gray ones are the Ford's, the red ones are the Farmalls, and the orange ones are the uh, Alice Chalmers. And by the way, take a look at that one. That happens to have a flathead Ford V8 in it. I hope you noticed the stacks that were on the side of it. Pretty cool tractor. They had a lot of, uh, those originally came with four cylinders, and they had a lot of them converted to six cylinders, kind of by the dealers. And apparently, they had a couple of them that had the Ford flathead V8 put in it too. Now, by the way, I want you to kind of listen to this tractor as it goes by, and I'll explain why. Apparently in the early years, the John Deere's had a specific sound that you either loved or hated. The Farmalls, as I understand it, the, their biggest competitor, the red ones, the Farmalls, uh, were four cylinders and I guess later six cylinders also, whereas the early uh, John Deere's were all two cylinders and they give that unique kind of thump, 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 thump. And there are just some people just absolutely are enchanted by the sound of the John Deere's. And typically, if you're a John Deere fan, uh, you're in love with the sound of the early John Deere's. Now, apparently, as I've been, as I learned uh, from uh, covering this uh, show, uh, in later years, of course, John Deere also has four cylinders and all the rest of it. But they're most remembered, and I, I, I imagine even to this day they have uh, two-cylinder John Deere's, and it, they're most remembered for that particular sound. I want to follow up on one thing though, I want to mention that this is not a show that you have to be a farmer to enjoy. 
If you'll recall when we covered this, they had a wonderful display of hit and miss engines. And the hit and miss engines, these are engines that were used at the turn of the century to drive water pumps and things like that uh, for irrigation and that sort of thing. They turn at very slow speeds, typically around 100 RPM, and most of them have all of their, and by the way, there's a case tractor going by, also orange, and when you see an orange tractor, you would expect Alice Chalmer, Chalmer uh, but the fact is, uh, case has a very, very similar orange, although some people insist that it's quite different, but I think it kind of looks very similar to Alice Chalmer, and it's easy to confuse. In any event, um, anybody can enjoy this day. Those hit and miss engines were absolutely wonderful, and the thing I liked most about that, for youngsters out there trying to understand how a four-cycle engine works, watching a hit and miss engine run will clearly and easily show you how they work because the crankcases on most of them are open. You can watch the crankshaft go around, then the connecting rods going up and down, and the pistons going up and down, and then on the other side the valves are all exposed, and you can watch the valves working. It's just a wonderful educational experience. But in addition to that, Everywhere you looked, there was something to enjoy at this event. Yes, it was primarily uh, for farmers because this is all farmer equipment. By the way, look at this great antique tractor. Now that is a farm all that's not red. So you know that that one is really an early farm all because they're all red now. Um, but anybody can enjoy something at this parade, whether they had, they had games for the kids and they had these um, uh, barrel trains, they called them, where they were towing people all over the place and hay wagon rides and, and all the rest of it. Not to mention, we already showed you today's program that they had the radio control model, um, uh, uh, radio controlled uh, model tractor pull going on, which was also quite interesting. And let me say something else about the presentation of this event. Uh, and by the way, very quickly, we also showed you earlier uh, a piece of the car show parade. Uh, this event also had a wonderful car show uh, there. I wish we were taping two or three shows there because we could have done a whole show just with the car show. And there were a number of cars, I presume because they are friends of the people in the Farm Association, uh, there were a number of those cars that we have never seen before. They were wonderful, wonderful cars. But beyond that, I really like the way they do this, that they have this parade. Uh, I would like to see some of the car show people pick up on this idea of where it's practical, where it's possible, where they have enough space, there's something quite difficult or quite different about actually seeing the vehicles moving uh, that I think is pretty compelling. And this was actually actually an excellent idea. I believe it was two. You know, these were all static displays. All these tractors were static displays, and people talked to them about what they were and why they were important and all that sort of thing. Some of them were historically significant, and some of them were show pieces that were just beautifully done. Um, but they were on, on a static display, typically the way a car show works uh, all day long. Well, at two o'clock in the afternoon. They all formed up for this parade kind of down the midway here, and people were all lined up on the side. And if I had known it in advance, I would have positioned our camera a little bit different, a little closer to where you see them making the turn down there, because there's like a bandstand they're going by, and they've got an announcer that's describing all the vehicles. I would have loved to have gotten all that audio. Unfortunately, uh, we didn't we didn't get it, but I'll, I'll know better next time uh, as to where to position ourselves. I didn't quite know what to expect here, but the point I'm trying to make is this is an excellent idea. I would love to see the car show people, you know, the normal hot rod shows and all that, that at some point in the day, say at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, uh, to have a parade of all these vehicles, to hear what they sound like and see what they look like when they move. These are vehicles and uh, I, to me it was very, very compelling and I thought it was a great idea. So I congratulate these folks and uh, these folks once again are the Lake County Farm Heritage Association and this is their fall festival uh, held in September every year and uh, you'd have to get a hold of them. I'll give it to you one more time. Lake County Farm Heritage Association and it's their fall festival. Uh, I would really, really recommend uh, that people attend this. Uh, and again, not just farmers, uh, everybody can be educated here and at the same time, everybody can be entertained. It was really a wonderful, wonderful event. By the way, take a look at this monster. I wish I remember the fellow's name, but uh, I love it when I run into people that are enthusiastic about their work. And this is actually a working tractor and the fellow that drives it is at retirement age, will be retiring shortly. And I rarely run into somebody quite as enthusiastic about his work and about his vehicle. He absolutely loves this vehicle. This is a working uh, working tractor. Uh, I'm not even sure if you can call that a tractor anymore because to me that's a, like a heavy duty piece of construction equipment actually, but, but it's at the tractor show, so we'll call it a tractor. Uh, and uh, I was uh, delighted by the attitude of the uh, of the owner operator. He, uh, he just absolutely loved his work and, and loved his tractor just the same way as uh, many of the guys uh, uh, love their Camaro 
Camaros and Chevelles and, and all the rest of it. Once again, I hope you're watching it as these vehicles go by because it's just a wonderful show of things that you probably have never seen before. As a matter of fact, some of the comments I got from the tractor show when we aired it, and what we're doing here, by the way, we didn't know what this parade was going to exactly be, so when we taped the show, we taped it the way we normally taped it with the interviews and we time every piece and all that. Then when they started running the parade, all of our work was kind of done, and Chuck and I looked at it and said, this is pretty cool. Let's just go ahead and tape this, and then, you know, at a later time, we'll go ahead and put it on the air. Uh, we don't want to really miss this. That's why you're seeing this on a, on a separate show. I really wanted to show this to you. First, it's a great idea, as I said before, about doing it in parade form. And secondly, there's some great pieces of equipment uh, to have a look at. And once again, by now you should know, you see that green coming, you're looking at John Deere's. Um, and there are some people that say that even the new John Deere's, even though there's been changes in engines and everything, they sound different. And I don't know how much of that is enthusiast talking. By the way, notice on the right, that's a lady driving that one. And there's a weird one coming up here. Uh, I suppose we can qualify as a tractor. And here's the guy that's going to turn right at poor Chuck. <laughs> Doesn't look like he's paid attention, but he must know. It's very close here. This one, though, looks more like something you'd find in a warehouse, sort of a warehouse piece of equipment. But uh, I, I suppose it's a tractor, and it must be designed that way for a reason. Again, you attend one of these shows the same way as you attend a car show or a boat show or anything else. You go there, the people are always with their vehicles, and all you have to do is ask them, tell me about this vehicle, tell me why it's important, tell me what's special about it. And these guys, just like the car show guys, will be glad to give you an hour on their vehicle if you're willing to stand there that long. And it's a wonderful education experience to find out about these things. Now the tractor that's approaching now, we would guess, would be a John Deere. And I'm guessing it would be a John Deere because it's green. However, I've got a feeling that this is an Oliver, and Oliver had the similar coloring um, but it had a big splash. Yes, that's an Oliver. It's got the big splash of yellow on it, too. I guess that's how you would differentiate between that. Uh, but anyhow, typically, the green ones are the John Deere's. Also, if you'll notice, a lot of these uh, tractors were pulling equipment. Uh, and some of the equipment was pretty elaborate. In fact, the one behind this one... You wouldn't believe the trees. He was literally had a half inch of clearance getting through some of the trees that, to make this approach to be part of this parade. But it is a very impressive piece of equipment. I wish I could tell you what it was, what it is, but I really don't know. Uh, but I must tell you, if you like mechanical things, there's no way you could not enjoy this show. These things are so mechanical with so many moving parts. They're just absolutely fascinating. And once again, the way you enjoy it is you go there and say, I really don't know what I'm looking at. Can you explain this to me? And uh, these folks are just like the car show people. And by the way, once again, take a look. We've got a lady driver there, and it happens to be on an Alice, uh, Alice Chalmer. And guess what? Look who's driving this one. And this was a, a family that owned 45 or 47 Alice Chalmers, one of every model except two. Uh, and they were so enthused about their tractors. Many of them were completely restored, and they let me drive their biggest one. I was so, uh, so pleased to do it. And believe me, it was fun. I had a great day. There. I thoroughly enjoyed myself. Now, once again, we've got John Deere's on the move here. Everything from big ones to smaller ones. And again, this entire event was open to all kinds of tractors, all kinds of vehicles. Everything from garden tractors to what I personally like, of course, are what they call crawler tractors, what I call bulldozers. I just personally have an affection for tracked vehicles. Now notice that this one is offset. I wish I had asked that question there uh, as to why a tractor, there were several of them that were offset, and I'm not really sure why. There was another question that I never asked that several people mentioned during the course of interviews. They used the expression, a row tractor, R-O-W. I assume it's R-O-W, maybe it's R-O-E. But they use the expression of row tractor. I don't really know what a row tractor is, so that's a question I should have asked and found out what is a row tractor. I'm kind of guessing that the ones with the wheels close together in the front like this one, maybe they would be called row tractors because the close together front wheels would go in a row or a furrow that's being plowed. 
but I'm just guessing. I could be completely off. That's why I say these things are very interesting to attend and, and uh, ask questions, uh, even if you're uh, even if you're not a farmer. Uh, they're technically interesting, and some of this equipment is just absolutely awesome. I wish we'd had a chance to show you some of the show tractors, the tractors that were uh, on display that have been uh, completely uh, well more than just uh, more than just uh, restored. Uh, but uh, many of them feature lots of chrome and bright work and all that. Really beautifully done, and uh, it really doesn't surprise me in a way that there are people that are heavy duty into their tractors. Uh, we find that same uh, thing, and by the way, there's an orange one, so we're talking to Alice Chalmer. Um, Really, these are the same thing. We find people that have collections of fire engines. Uh, we have people that uh, have collections of dump trucks, and what's certainly bulldozers. Bulldozers has got to be a very big thing. They have clubs for these people, and they have little meets where they get together and plow dirt.